sir. So I want to talk some offensive line with Ramon Foster, which I say reluctantly. Yeah. Not really. We give him a lot of crap. And this actually is good football conversation because the Titans are not only going to be in a position to draft an offensive lineman at number 11. Yeah. They're also going to be in the position to draft maybe two or three linemen on days two and three mm-hmm. at literally any position. You wow! could go. That's right. You could get a right tackle in day two or three that could be a day one starter and move an NPF to the left side. You can get a left tackle at number 11, and Nicholas Petit Frere can stay your right tackle. You can get a center in the third or fourth that could be your starting center once Ben Jones is done, which uh, could be this offseason. So, Ramon, I'll start here. What makes a lineman? Specifically at the tackle position, we'll start there. Yeah, a top fifteen prospect. Ooh, first thing, the one thing you cannot buy size. Yep, that justifies a lot at, at those tackle positions. Let's go specifically left because they're labeled a certain way, different than right tackles. Right tackles look like Conklin. Okay, okay let's just break that down. Bigger guys that are. Run, more run blockers than they are pass protectors. They're good as far as the passing game goes on the right side, but they're better suited probably in the run game and, mm-hmm. and just being an eraser when it comes down to protecting that edge. The left tackle is more of a slender basketball-looking guy. Um, long arm, long digits, uh, the ability to be flexible, athletic. Their 40 time is probably faster than the right tackle position when it comes down to it. They move gracefully. Like, that's what a left tackle is when you just break down the thesis of what they do and how they're supposed to look. And I know, of course, you have shorter guys. I play uh, next to a guy that was like 6'2", six, 6'3". Six, so he's not a 6'6 six, six guy. Mm-hmm. Um, but I look at him in a sense and say, I want my left tackle 6'5", six, 6'7". Six, okay. uh, if they're taller, actually, that could be more of a detriment to them. Really? In because leverage. Okay. Leverage is a like, thing when it comes down. No, like shorter guys like a Freeney or like an Aaron Donald that rushes outside the edge or a guy with really good hip flexibility like Miles Garrett. Yes, I can cover you up, but being the fact that I'm super tall, mm-hmm. my bend may a little bit more. different. Yeah, yeah <laughs> you can't, you don't need a waist bender when it comes down to those positions. Specifically speaking about like why I don't want a guy six eight. You know what I'm saying? Like six five to six seven is where I want my what left was Taylor? tackle. How tall? Is Taylor's he? what like six five six six. Okay, I want to yeah. say six five. Yeah, he's six five six. We were like eye to eye as far as like height. So Taylor six seven. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? He's in that oh. world right there of being taller. This was Coach Mack's answer to this question earlier this morning, and I want to get y'all's reaction to this as well because Coach Mack had a pretty specific trait he looks for in elite linemen. No, but the movement part of it is what separates those guys. Yeah. Not only the movement, but then also you've got to combine that with the ability to have enough tenacity to do it down in and down out, down in and down out. And then you are always be looking to try to discern and find that guy. And it's, this, is what, this is sometimes what the 40-yard dash won't tell you or, or what the short shuttle won't tell you or what, you know, is those guys that have the tenacity and the mm-hmm. inner drive that it takes to be an offensive lineman in this league because that is not an easy task. Hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. So what separates second, third round, the fourth round? I'm not saying those guys can't take that big leap too, but to be picked in the first round to me says this. His speed needs to be about a 4.7, no higher than a 4.9. He meets that. His arms just as long as his height, if yeah. not longer. Uh, and then when I'm looking at his tape, because that's where the draft comes into play uh, as far as you know being drafted that high. Did he dominate specifically? and run and pass. Can I trust him even as a young guy on day one to get in on that left side specifically and protect my quarterback? What did you do against his his uh, um, his competition? Who did he play and how did he play them? And also the attitude aspect of film too. Did he turn down guys? You know, did, did he submit to guys like that matters because the O-line position is one where if you're, if you're that type of athlete – all of that is going to be there. The strength, the running, the mm-hmm. jumping, all of that is going to be there. But what separates them is their ability to finish, their ability to be good in the run and pass game, and are they smart enough to handle it too? 
Like, do you understand angles better than the guy next to you? Like, do you understand combo blocks a little bit better? What type of offense that you play in somewhat that's going to prepare you for this many dropbacks? Like, you got to be the same way we look at the shutdown corner, right? Yeah. Where they mm-hmm. blanket one side of the field. It's the same way you look at the offensive tackle, at left tackle specifically. Are you? Do I have to worry about Miles Garrett? Do I have to worry about these supreme rushers on the outside? Like, those are the questions you're asking yourself. Their punch, hand placement, are they violent in their punch too? Mm -hmm. When they go out to put their hands on somebody, are we dancing? Meaning, I'm mirroring you and there's nowhere you can go. The hips, to me, is probably the biggest determining factor when it comes down to saying a guy is elite or not. Because you hear this being thrown around a lot, waist bender. Well, what does waist bending mean? Probably his feet are a little slow behind him, so he tends to reach for the defender as opposed to being able to cover them up. If I bend my waist, meaning I'm leaning, defenders can take full advantage. Of, they're going to pull you, rip you, spin you around, all those types of things. And if that does happen, because it's going to happen, ain't right. no if, you're going to bend your waist at some point in time, are your hips fluid enough to move you back inside to cover them up? So here's the question. We had this conversation in the green room off, you know, yeah. off the radio. But with the assessment of Dylan Radins then, yeah. when they – drafted him coming off of a pandemic year he went to ndsu north dakota state that's a great school but let's just be real the competition is not at the level that other offensive linemen are competing in every single day Mm -hmm. with him do you just think they got the evaluation just like it wasn't right what and that was was that the cover year was that 21 yeah that was but uh, it was coming off a year where i don't think they played a lot it was 21 yeah because uh, as it all said was covid year here we go um that night you said you heard me on the broadcast with coach now i was driving in oxville and literally the second he was drafted on titans radio ramon says i see him as a guard Mm -hmm. let me tell you why and it's me looking at his 40 justified it Mm -hmm. his feet were heavy he moved like, if you hear me on the airways, I'm stomping my feet. Yeah. That's kind of how sure. he moved. You want your left tackle? It needs to be that the entire time. Quicker turnover. Quicker turnover yeah. of the feet. And then I saw him also being more of a waist bender. He leaned a little bit more. Even if he didn't do it at tackle, I saw that trait of him moving forward with his body as opposed to staying straight up, having really good hips, a really good core, and really good punch. I didn't see that much. And those senior bowl practices that he had right. – I saw him finishing blocks leaned over. Then I saw his chest backing up and pushing them backwards. And I, I thought to myself and evaluate him, like, uh, guard. Yeah. And you can get away with that at guard because he's a he's a good enough athlete to be moved inside at guard than he is an NFL tackle. I had that issue. That's why I could spot it. I was like, my feet were good enough for college getting sure. to an angle because I might have been going against a sophomore or a senior that didn't know how to rush like NFL rushers do. The one thing that you're going to learn in this league is what you thought you knew in college, if you're just a little bit below the line athletically, is going to get exposed. And that's what I thought with him. Put him in a place to, to protect himself inside, mm-hmm. and that's guard, that's center. I said that t- this to y'all off air. If I'm dealing ratings right now and Ben Jones is potentially gone this year, mm-hmm. right? He got a year left on that deal. Yep. If I am, listen to me, yep. Dylan Radins, I'm right now inside that facility. I'm grabbing a football and I'm talking to somebody or figuring out how do I snap yeah. this ball. Heck, uh, Kevin Mawai just came yep. back to Nashville. Hey, Mawai, teach me how to snap the ball. That's going to be his biggest advantage, I feel like, going into the season. He's a bigger body dude, uh, six foot five. That, that beasts up your offensive line in itself right there. I'm thinking to myself, if he can get his lateral hip movement good enough to where he can snap the ball and move and block, his career could be at center. And that may sound crazy on my end, but if I'm him, I'm making myself more valuable. If anyone can say it, you can. I'm increasing value first by adding another position. Him at center could be a big advantage for this Titans team, specifically with the idea that they got to replace a few guys. That's interesting. So your idea for Dylan Radin's is trying to move inside and prolong his career by being a center. Yes. So what I'm hearing is the deficiencies in his game and the knocks on him are not correctable. 
Well, not, at, I, not at tackle. N- not at no, not, not at, at tackle. tackle. Okay, I, 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 I don't think he's fast out. enough. And, and I think yeah, and it's he that got part beat too. out by a rookie. And, and I think the Titans have accepted the fact that Dylan Radins is never going to be a starting tackle at the NFL. No, we x that off the map already. We're good on that one. But mm-hmm. what I'm hearing from you, you're talking about okay, his feet are too heavy. It, the turnover isn't quick enough. That's not something you can teach. It ain't maybe loss of weight. Okay, little training here or there, and just getting stronger. It but, can help. And if he moves right. inside, go ahead, go ahead. But he's already, that's what I'm saying, is that to move to tackle, he's already a little bit undersized, correct? N- it, it, to nah, play left he's tackle? 6'5". Six, 6'5", six, okay. I think, well, he's too, he's too slow to play left tackle. Okay. Yeah. So Not even undersized. It, it, I guess him losing weight would correct the, maybe the, the quick feet, heavy feet issue. Yeah. But then you create other problems. Well, no, position. I'll say this. Let me say reshape his body. Okay, sure. Okay. Sure. Reshape his body. Trim up, add more muscle, get more lean is what I would say, Will. Get more lean, get to where you can get a base underneath you a whole lot faster. His first job that he's got to be able to do is snap that ball and being able to anchor real quick. Mm-hmm. If he does that by getting stronger, increasing his foot flexibility and knee flexibility and his core, he can take on a bull rush better at center, I feel like, than he could at left tackle. Because this is the thing. He he has the body type to me to where he'd probably be better off setting more square. He snapped the ball, get off the line of scrimmage, and then get into attack mode to bend that he can anchor. That's where I think his biggest advantage is going to be. Because I think he got good enough hips. They're just not like left tackle, right tackle hips in the NFL. Sure. And, yes, I know the film is out there against the 49ers. But, y'all, what do I always tell y'all, too? Spot starting is cool. Every de- every game, every week starting is a totally different animal because you get broken down by those guys in those scouting uh, scouting rooms and just do film study that it makes it impossible for you to correct it like that. So his advantage is to move into me. But that, that premier left tackle, Will, when you see him, you know him. Like if you're going after the Paris Johnson guy at number 11. Ohio State. Or at Ohio State. He says to me, lean. He says to me, athletic. He also says to me he has a, an affinity for a physicality, too, because he has played guard. Also, quick little pro tip, Trent Williams was a former guard before he went tackle. If you learn guard and you mm-hmm. can't play tackle, your physicality aspect of what it can bring to a game is out of this oh, world. Yeah. It is a different animal moving from the outside to inside. That's why I said for if Dylan Raiden's going inside like that, one thing we saw from him, he was on the ground a lot. You have to really condition yourself to receive those blows and give those blows inside because it's bigger dudes, stronger dudes, and and now they're getting just as fast, too, to deliver those punches up the middle like that. So, uh, But if we're talking about Paris Johnson, to be specific, I think he has the physicality, the speed. He played big-time ball, and he's got long arms with good hips and his 40 speed is probably going to be one of the better tackle ones because he's a slender basketball type of uh, athlete he looks like a power forward yeah and that's interesting and Kayla I feel like being around Dylan and being around that offensive line room Mm -hmm. I think Mike Vrabel likes Dylan Radins the guy and sure. That's why and, you need to make and himself. He'd more be valuable. the first one running out when we're ready for press conferences. I'm not joking you. Stonehouse and him were the first ones running out with their helmets every single day that mm-hmm. we were there. And you can work with that a little bit. And ultimately, look, you can be a good guy. And I I know a lot of good guys that aren't NFL players. Like it, it that's not a one to one correlation, but this isn't an Isaiah Wilson situation no, now, oh, now granted nothing no. is but that's that's the extreme but yeah mm-hmm. this isn't just a guy that isn't getting He's it and isn't getting the attitude part of it you feel like Mike Vrabel likes him the personality and the evidence of that is the way he spoke about him after the San Francisco game on Thursday night football in 2021 yeah, yeah. when he spoke really really highly of Dylan and it, I, it feels like he did at times this year when he came in and did a job mm-hmm. in spot duty of Aaron Brewer and mm-hmm. Ben Jones when Aaron had to move inside and and Dylan, a lot of times we were finding out on Sunday morning that, hey, some of these guys are inactive. But Dylan's going to have to go do a job today at right guard. Mm-hmm. Right. Or, or uh, working a little bit at left tackle when uh, his season was ended with the injury. It feels like the Titans really, really want him to to have a win and to be a piece of this line moving forward. Yeah. yeah. It would help this team so much if he can so give much. them something. something. Yeah. And that's why I don't know if I'm completely opposed to Ramon's idea of possibly putting him at center Mm -hmm. because if if you can utilize him somehow on that line he clearly Mm -hmm. is working he clearly has the attitude 
but you can't force the tackle situation, no. which he, they're not. No. Um, and now if you draft a couple guys and you see what you can get out of him this next season, yeah, it could be very, very it beneficial. Could. And I, I'm i sure, if anything, he's a second-round pick. They want to make it happen. They want to. They want to make it work. I think the pedigree is there. He's just got to learn, you know. And, I'll and just, he's had time. I, I, I'll throw these names out there, and y'all let me know if Dylan Radins matches any one of these. Trent Williams, Tyron Smith, David Bakhtiari, even Taylor Lewan, Teron Arfset, Garrett Bowles, Laramie Tunsil, Taylor Decker, uh, Deion Dawkins, Jake Matthews. No. Those are your top 10 guys in the league. Is he the caliber of athlete on paper that we've seen? No. Compared to those guys? Not right. No. Not right now. You know what I'm saying? So his better move is to move inside. And I even look at Orlando Brown Jr. Mm-hmm. I, I'll say I like him a lot. I respect the young man. He's really forced himself into that left tackle job. But if we being real, he's probably more of a right tackle than he is a left. Mm-hmm. And I think that's why I always get on that soapbox about Conklin. Because you had a guy that was a supreme athlete at his position, not left tackle, but there aren't many all pro right tackles. Darnell Wright could be one, perhaps. I mean, draft. legitimately, his on the right side, and now I'll say this too the athlete has to get, you know, the accelerator on, on right tackles have to move up too yeah. because teams have gotten smart. Oh, you got your supreme athlete on at left tackle? You can find specialists who are good at playing that position. Oh, my. Mm-hmm. Not just because, hey, this guy's a good tackle, but he's not quite athletic enough. Now yeah. it's, hey, this guy is a right tackle. Yeah. It's becoming a different mold and a different position altogether. But they've also started putting big-time rushers on the right side of the offensive line. Right. right. J.J. Watt, uh, no, T.J. Watt rushes off the right side. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, Harold rushes off the right mm-hmm. side of yeah. the offense. Like, Danico Autry at times. Yeah. Rushes off the right side. Yeah. That right tackle better have Vaughn would move over to the right side because, oh, you're the duck that I heard about and I'm ready to eat. Right. And let's just add this, too. I'm excited to see who the offensive line coach will be. Yeah. Just in terms of a little bit of development, maybe for some of these younger guys when they come in. Because I don't know if we saw that fully with Keith. Yeah. I didn't think we could actually do this, y'all. We filled a whole segment with O line talk. Oh, well, let's take the surprise crazy. out of you, boys. I know. I I just kept going. I, I got more. We'll be doing a lot of this say, at the wait, senior bowl. We got a whole summer, right? We got more <laughs> and the summer. Jeez.